Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dario, and I'm uh, here to uh, come here to talk to you about how we actually are mon uh, monitoring the Kubernetes cluster with the external Zabbix server. Uh, so, to start, who, 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 uh, where I come from? We come from from the government. Uh, government-owned IT company with more than 50 years of, of existence. So our main customers are Minister of Finance, Tax Administration, Customer Administration. So our main users are either government employees or all, or all Croatian citizens. And because of that, so we have signed the SLA agreement with, uh, for most of our, our services. And because of that, we need state-of-the-art monitoring solution. Previously, everything was deployed from the virtual machines, but currently we are slowly migrating to Kubernetes, aka, in our case, OpenShift. And those strange new stuff also need something to be monitored. And what we're actually going to monitor, we're going to monitor a pod. You, you, you can, if you don't, don't, if you don't come from the Kubernetes ecosystem, you can imagine it's like a simple process, or your uh, one-hour application. And in the traditional approach, if you want to monitor something, something squiggly, like here, it probably has an API. You can exec a server through the API, and you collect some some data. And the first. Uh, the thing that comes to mind that we, with the squiggly thing, we can replace it with, with the Kubernetes. But uh, do we really need to do that? As Mr. Zabrashil uh, uh, said yesterday, we don't actually. Because Zabrashil is in a, is in a universal open, so, open source enterprise level monitoring uh, system. That actually means that we can do absolutely any, any, anything with it, and we don't need to. Uh, connect to some other monitor solution and collect data from it. Zabbix, Zabbix is, is capable of, uh, to collect all the data on its own. And our solution is actually that on each Kubernetes cluster, we deploy a single Zabbix agent. And in, in that scenario, Zabbix agent is the source of all true. Zabbix agent is responsible for collecting all information. And why, why, why we uh, choose uh, this uh, scenario? For example, if, if you have an API, uh, master one, master two, master three, if, and if the crash has happened on this side, your all pods are completely okay and running. And what should monitoring solution do in this case? It should run. The show must go on, the monitoring has to, go, uh, has to continue, and the monitoring has to, uh, has to be the last man standing in the, in the case of any, any emergency. And for example, if the worker one also gone, and for example, if on the worker one the Prometheus was running, so all your monitoring is completely down in this scenario. So monitoring has to continue, and um, and we, 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 we choose in this architecture because in this case we have a completely distributed monitoring, and each agent is responsible for its own own monitoring, and they have uh, uh, they don't uh, commu communicate with each other. So, in, in, in case of an emergency, uh, monitoring is, act, is actually um, the last resource uh, for the uh, searching for some kind of proof. So, we want to receive uh, 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 events, for example, crash, loop, liveness problem, memory usage is approaching its limit, or the auto memory manager has, has performed some sort of a kill. So, we want to receive that emergency, uh, emergency uh, response. And we want to see some beautiful graphs inside, inside of Zabbix. So we will have to firstly register our worker, discover all pods, and then collect all the data regarding to the pods. Worker registration is pretty simple. We only need to spin up Zabbix agent on a Kubernetes worker, expose it to the host pod, so it's visible to the external Zabbix server. And then uh, using the uh, field reference uh, from uh, SPET's node name and uh, specify that host metadata item is actually the true uh, uh, fully qualified domain name for the, this worker, a Zabbix agent will uh, auto register itself with the correct, um, uh, domain, uh, with the, with the correct name. 
which is actually the, the fully qualified domain name of this worker, not, not the host name of uh, that pod. The pod discovery, we have to, because we are completely down um, in, in, in terms of the abstraction layer, what are actually pods? Pods are actually a bunch of uh, processes which are bundled in uh, one logical unit, and that logical unit, unit is actually a system slice. And so why, why can't we match that system slice with some uh, useful pod information? Uh, just a bit of theory. There are uh, 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 three uh, main classes of pods, and in, in this sense, we have actually a, a tree discovery rule for each uh, of, the, of, of the class. And, and when I say that uh, we are dis uh, discovering slices, that is, Zabbix can already discover slices because slices are systemd, uh, normal systemd unit files. So we can, we can do that with systemd unit discover slice, and there are a bunch of slices with zero to none useful information here because we can't read that. It's 14A840, blah, blah, blah. But in wire log pods, location on the Kubernetes worker, there is a bunch of folders containing the logs of a pod. So let's, let's examine the name of this folder. The first part is the namespace or the project of a pod. The second one is the true pod name visible from the API side. And the second one, uh, and, and the third one, uh, is a slice suffix. So it's actually one right here. And if, if we match those two with a custom user parameter uh, script, we have uh, our pod discovery. So the results actually look like, like this. We have a slice name, a pod name, and pod namespace. The slice name will, will actually um, be, used, be used later for, for collecting all the, all the uh, useful data. And the pod name and pod namespace will, are all, only important when we are sending some uh, 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 we're raising a trigger and sending, uh, sending e emails uh, to uh, real world people. And pod lifecycle and datum. So we, we, we created our discovery, and we need, when we, we need to create uh, item prototypes. By default, uh, memory accounting and CPU accounting are turned on, so we can, we can without any problem, utilize uh, uh, utilize a CSMD module by collecting the CPU and, uh, and collecting uh, uh, total RSS memory for our pods. And we can raise a trigger that CPU is more than 30%, for example, used on some host. And this is how it actually looks in the uh, production environment. Uh, memory limits. Uh, um, Pods can grow um, in, into the in infinity, actually. They, they can be limited. And if they overreach the limit, the out-of-memory manager will perform a murder on them. And thankfully, memory limit can be easily uh, read from a file. So again, we uh, usually utilize VFS file contents. So nothing uh, out of the or, or, or ordinary really here. And by looking at this graph, the red line is the memory limit. The green one is memory utilization. And those black dots are the moment when the auto memory manager performed the kill. So we, we, we can see all that in, in one graph and see a sudden drop after the auto memory manager has performed the kill. And because we have a memory limit and memory utilization, we can, for example, create a simple trigger that will, uh, for example, if we are 90% close to the memory limit, we can raise the trigger because there is an emergency that the application will be killed. And again, uh, and, and also crash loop liveness and readiness probe. Those, those are some, if the application is not ready, it's not responding, it can uh, enter those, in, those events. And if it enters in that event, it really, uh, the, the user experience so on that application is not really good. It, 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 it can be either down or the, uh, or, the, or, the, or the utilization can be really high so the user requests can't get, get through. So we also need uh, information about that. But we can't uh, collect it from the API side. So we are, we, we, our Zabbix agent is, is located on the, on the worker. So we need to think about 
who is, perform who is uh, performing the crash loop, lightness probe, readiness probe, and out of uh, memory uh, killer. Mm -mm. And the answer is the CCMD uh, service, Kubernetes service, and the kernel. The kernel is, is performing the out of, uh, is uh, running the out of me memory when the memory uh, has been breached, and the Kubernetes is actually performing the crash loop, lightness, and readiness. And what we can do, we can actually read a log file deep, um, uh, by using default verbosity level. So the first one, there is a probe type lightness by some strange pod UID, oh, and that's our slice suffix that we discovered already. The second one, there is a crash loop, also some with some uh, slice suffix, and there is an out of memory kill on support, which is all, and we can also see a, a slice suffix. Wonderful. And this is actually the architecture, so bear with me. The, uh, all logs are stored in the journal there on Linux, and with our syslog, you can, you can actually transfer, trans, transform them into the um, normal text file. And you create, uh, in, our, in our example, three items on each host. This Linux log item is, uh, uh, is a, log, and a log item on var log messages, and it's only searching for a, a Linux log uh, messages. Only for, for, for that. And it's actually a master item. And in the discovery rule, we created an uh, item prototypes, uh, created an item in item prototypes, which is actually a dependent item of the Linux log. And its, it's job is, o o is actually only to search I, I for the slice name in, in yeah. that error message. And if it's in, if it's in, if 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 he found one, then the Linux probe uh, has, has failed on that pod, and uh, number one, um, and the item uh, item uh, uh, switches from number zero to number one. And if it if in 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 the summation, if there were uh, if there are, uh, for example, a three or, or four of them in two or three minutes, we can raise a trigger. And if there is none, by using no data, we can all, uh, lower the, uh, the trigger down. And, and by uh, utilizing this approach, we are actually all, only creating three file descriptors uh, um, and not uh, 600 or 700 of them. And a little a bit, uh, uh, and so this, uh, not, not, not to go too much in, into the graphs, but if you do design your item prototypes, uh, on the specific way, you can create really wonderful graphs. This, uh, this is actually the item prototype is from a discovery rule. You can see them from the previous slide, crash loop detected dependent item, line is problem, or I'm killed. But we can, you can see a CPU cores, and there is a pod name placeholder, and then the pod namespace placeholder. And by utilizing the w simple wildcard, we can, w w w in this scenario, for host pattern, which, uh, which matches uh, the Kubernetes worker, and for for this expression, we, we can collect um, we can collect stacked graph, so stack graph, for all uh, for all pods in the namespace A00 Zebex test, and this, it's it's a CPU core utilization. And this is it for the namespace, and the same approach can be uh, can be used for the for the node, but uh, vice versa. So the wild card goes on the other side. And the real um, great um, uh, feature is that it's being sorted from the top to, to the bottom. So you don't uh, uh, lose yourself in all those uh, similar colors. And the last one, uh, so you set it, uh, every, everything up and your manager comes, you know, I need the last month uh, utilization for some namespace. And you said, OK, OK. But there are a bunch of uh, pods uh, scattered on, on a bunch of nodes. So how can, how, how can I do that actually in Zavix? And thankfully, from the version 5.4, you can, because you, you, we can use an ag aggregation item. And in this scenario, we actually uh, we, we sum all, uh, we, we sum all uh, co uh, core utilization on host that match uh, the Kubernetes non prod group, and which tag and which tag is and and which item tag is actually equivalent to the application A00 Zabbix test. So all pods that are coming from the A00 Zabbix test in, in namespace. 
and we can create this wonderful. Uh, um, so it's an actually this is not stacked. This is not stacked. This uh, and this is actually the the, the sum the ag aggregation of, of all uh, of pod, uh, pod uh, CPU utilization. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.